it's back to business for me, F1 business. And it's been 12 days shy of a year since I last did this at the Melbourne GP in Australia in 2020. So this is my first COVID test of 2021. Last year I had just one in the same spot when I thought I was heading across to Europe. But uh, that never panned out. So here's number one of probably many this year. Good morning. Okay, just open your mouth, talk to me normally. Oh. <laughs> I just gotta get your tonsil, that's all. Just oh. Keep it. That's it done. Now the nose, just a little bit in, irritating tickle. Oh, Jesus, it's irritating. It is irritating. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. Well done, my sweetheart. You're a okay. champion. Thank you. See you Ciao. Thank you for presenting for COVID-19 testing. Your result was not detected, so I'm free to leave the country. This is your travel exemption to leave Australia. Test results, flights, your health declaration form, Italy step back, yep. Bahrain accommodation, Italy accommodation, two copies of your permanent pass, original copies of your permanent pass. This is your whole folder, your life. I've condensed all of that into this. You have got just about everything covered from hay fever, indigestion, chest infection, pneumonia, vomiting, diarrhea, sore eyes, lack of sleep. Everything is in here. All of this has to go into these two bags. All Australians have to take that. So this is it. Everything packed into one suitcase, one camera bag, and a 600mm lens which I hand carry on a plane. Well that said, I'll be off to the airport shortly on what I hope is a big year. Perth International Airport and the moment I step into that building I have to wear a mask. In Western Australia we haven't worn masks for any more than two weeks in the last year and because I'm living in Lancelot most of the time I've only probably had one on for two days. So this is going to come as quite a shock. So this is the threshold. This is where the audio changes now as we head into the Perth International Airport, which is a lot quieter than I'm used to seeing it. It's a very bizarre feeling walking into this airport because on this flight there'd normally be 350 people. There's only 100 heading out of Australia. And when it comes into Australia, there's only 40 or 50 people. Well, there's nothing terribly elegant about duty-free shopping in Perth because it's all behind wire mesh fence. I must admit I'm questioning whether I'm doing the right thing by going back to work in F1. I think once I get there I'll be fine, but it's just when you see the bizarre circumstances that we're in. And you've got to understand that being in Western Australia, we've had no real inconvenience over the past year. Hi there, hey. good to be back. How are you today? Excellent, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Ilman. Super, super, right super. Here. Good to be back. Enjoy. See you soon. I'll be honest with you, I'm quite surprised. I'm sitting here in this seat en route to Bahrain for testing and the first race because there have been a huge number of obstacles to overcome. For a start, there was no guarantee that paddock access was going to come about, and as it turns out, we don't have access to the paddock, but I still think there are some good enough shots and stories to be had to head there. Getting an exemption to leave Australia is tricky, but I managed to jump that hurdle. I got some flights out, and I've got a number of flights back because I'm just not sure how long I'm going to last, because we have to do two weeks quarantine when we come back to Australia, and it might be that I have to stay away for the entire season. Another factor was insurance. Now you can't get COVID-19 insurance, but I needed medical insurance and insurance on my equipment. And that was very tricky because initially they said they would only cover me for a 180 day period. And it could be that I'm away for the whole year. And it was only at the very last minute, and I'm talking a day and a half prior to my departure, that I managed to nail down an insurance policy to cover me. But with those hurdles jumped, I'm certainly excited about what this season could offer.
Hallo. Hallo. The one time you can take your mask off in flight is while you're dining. And Emirates do an amazing job with dining and they just brought back their full menu a couple of months ago. You get a whole lot of snacks, you get your own soft drink bar, and on top of that, there's a new amenities kit from Bulgari, which includes a magnificent fragrance. But anyway, I'm gonna tuck into this because it looks amazing. Emirates also provide a little amenities pack and this COVID initiative of a hygiene pack. Bye bye. Well, that was my first flight in nearly a year. Very comfortable. Delighted to be in Dubai. A couple of hours here, and then it's on to Bahrain, where we get tested upon arrival, and away we go. So you have your next flight to Bahrain. Bahrain. Oh, this is great. This is a new initiative. I've never had this before. So often we'll um, get a stand and have to take a bus to the uh, terminal. But today we've landed at the Terminal B and um, we've got this great golf buggy. I've got about three hours to kill uh, here in Dubai Airport before my flight to Bahrain and I've only just received my visa. Just came through. Um, so what are we, a few hours prior and here's my visa. But Bahrain always operates like that. They're very reliable. It's just all very last minute. And you have to provide a detailed rundown of what equipment you're bringing into the country. But last night, when I checked in, um, the woman at the counter went out the back for 10 minutes, took my passport, came back, gave it back to me along with my ticket. And physically what has to happen is she has to ring Canberra, our national headquarters for immigration, and say, Kim Elman is leaving the country, can you please open up the swipe gates? So they have to program me to let me out of the country because not every Australian can travel. In fact, very few Australians can travel. And I'm most grateful for the government allowing me to leave my country. And hopefully, I end up getting back there in the same condition that I left. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Welcome back. Thank to you. Beautiful. So last flight, this cabin, which has eight seats, only had four people. This flight, same eight seat cabin and just one person with three staff. I've been to Bahrain a couple of times and I always find it interesting that when you fly in, all of the houses are the same colour as the ground. Who's this gentleman? Hmm? Cheers. <laughs> I've just had my second COVID test and they interestingly didn't stick it down my throat, just up my nose. But now I'm just waiting and I have been waiting for some time to organize a couple of SIM cards for communications both in my phone and in my little hotspot that I use to transmit photos live from the track and it is taking forever. Me? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> well, shukran. My name is Kim, hello. Hello. You hello. are? Mr. Saad. Mr. Saad, thank yes. you. You're welcome. It's a beautiful car. Well, that was quite a journey. It's probably about 21 hours from leaving 
the restaurant where I had dinner at last night in Perth to arriving into the hotel room where it's 11.28 in the morning. The next five to 10 hours will be just simply in this room self-isolating until I get the results of my COVID test, after which I'm able to head out and enjoy Bahrain. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And I think only 3% of watches of videos of mine are actually subscribers. So I invite you to subscribe so you get advance notice of what's coming up. And there'll be some great content this year from not only at the track, but around the track, away from the track too, in the different cities that I attend. All my picks are available to own at ProStarPicks.com. You'll find my F1 driver's books at KimIllman.com. And for my best picks, head to Instagram at Kim Ilman. From Bahrain, I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Yes, not infected.